You know, I, I think there is something magical about defense games. It's, I just, I, I, I'm super addicted to them. And I'm not even really interested in like challenging myself by going for like the, the more difficult, you know, oh, uh, round two, blah, 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 blah. You have to beat, you know, uh, two different paths are coming. I think the, the, the real sort of white whale for me right now is can you beat this game with only ballistas? Plus one range on ballistas is huge. So I'm going to take that right now. I've no need for mana generation. Let's get our eco going. I think long term, the, 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 the ability to generate revenue for this build is low. So literally anything that gives me long term sustainability in terms of eco is probably worth it. 5% slow this early is quite powerful. Um, having access to the mana bank, I mean, that's only going to get more common. Let's take the 5% slow. It makes a difference. We'll expand. Um, and we're probably just going to be doing a lot of waiting here in the early game. These are eco towers. They're not going to be super powerful or useful. Um, there's a nice choke point tower here that I could use to aim at um, aim at people. Uh, crit chance is nice to go for. It kind of gets better the longer the game goes, but everything else here is probably just a bad choice. So I'll expand and then place a tower here aiming at the least health. I'll try to kill some of these low health guys before they get too close to my tower. It's a little bit of a worry, but I do have a big battery of, of towers here to, to cover this um, need. And they all have plus one range too, which is helping. Banditry, very key. In fact, like it's just a tier one pick every time. Let's expand and be ready. There we go. This is a really good choke point that we've picked up. Let's aim at most health. Let's add four levels. We're going to need to deal with armor too. So we're going to have a very rough start because we went so heavy on eco, but if we can make it past the rough start, um, we will have a lot of eco. And, you know, right now this hasn't paid for itself, but it will over time. You know, we're getting 18 gold next round, which is huge. Um, I, I don't know if this is actually worth it to do. Maybe it isn't. Am I ready to start using mana? I think I think I can safely get mana bolts one, because um, I don't ever have that many ma like towers shooting at once. I can expand here and place a tower that'll be focusing on most armor. Give it a couple of armor levels and it'll chip away at the armor of these guys. Uh, the big problem I have now is the lack of just raw damage that isn't like immediately at my tower. So that's gonna be a problem that we'll have to take into account. It might even be worth it to sell some of these towers in the near future to get more towers if I feel like I don't have enough damage on the front line. But as long as it's printing enough money for me, I think we're okay. Max bleed is good to pick up early. I don't think sorcery is worth it because literally everything scales better than that. Let's go for max bleed. And um, bleed is probably the least important one to keep stacked on people. So I'm okay with getting something that gets rid of it faster. Let's continue to spread out our towers. I'll have you aim for armor and we'll continue to expand. Well, what, like, basically what I want is ideal. Oh man, this is actually a really good set of choke points. I'm going to be able to do some really good tower overlapping here. Um, once these paths get a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I do think I'm going to have to sell. I think I'm going to have to sell some of these towers around my capital in order to just get enough damage over here to where this, this isn't a problem. Although, am, am I riding the line? Here's the thing. I could be like perfectly riding the line. Right now, my crit chance isn't significant enough for it to be making a difference to me. Okay, and that worked out fine. Maximum poison or maximum burn is my choice. I could also pick up the mine. I don't think having extra health, since I'm going for banditry, I'm not really ever wanting anything to ever hit my tower. I'm kind of playing that edge build. Extra burn could be good. Let's take extra burn and then we want to place another tower. You will be focused on most armor. One two, three, whatever number of levels I can cram into you, I will. And then I think there's going to be another tower going on this section here, just to deal with any of these low health guys that sneak on through. And now we're looking, now with this kind of set of paths, we're looking a little bit more healthy. It's not perfect right now, but it's definitely looking a little bit better. Um, let's give him like two health levels so he actually does like a decent amount of damage. This triple fire should deal with this. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. Okay, we got it under control. I'm super addicted to trying to make the um the ballista only build work plus one damage to armor that feels like it's gonna have some pretty good help i mean it scales across all of these towers um i can't afford another tower just yet but we'll expand here i would like this tower you'll be focused on most armor one two three throw three levels onto you now we're running into a little bit of problem that things are bunching we don't have enough damage we kind of need to start concentrating a little bit more damage around these choke points i think we're not looking too bad People are getting pretty far into our maze. But again, remember, that's the, the reason that's happening is because we're working so hard on generating revenue with our maze. Um, so I think I think there's actually a really good spot here 
for just like a pair of ballistas. 25% burn damage. There we go. Now that's a big deal. That's going to open up the game a little bit for us here. Um, I'm going to have you target most health. Uh, and then I'm going to have you get like well, three or four levels. That'll be fine. Uh, let's continue to expand. Our tower status is looking good. I want to get a second tower here. This is like super valuable is being able to get towers that like overlap on two sections of the map. That makes a difference for sure. Now, big problem is these guys are bunching up a little bit, but that should that that problem should alleviate itself as my maze kind of like figures itself out. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it yet. Plus one range though is huge or attacks against bleeding enemies have 5% crit chance. Increase maximum burn. Eventually, I do want that maximum burn. I also want universities. I don't need universities yet. Um, and plus one range on longbows is just huge. It means like I have way more potential for overlapping. Um, like there's a triple. Yeah, this is very obviously like a really good point for longbows. So let's go ahead and expand this path and put one here. Uh, we'll have this one target most armor, I guess. One, two, three, four. Bring it up to that level. Um, right now, burn damage because, well, burn damage is still pretty valuable, but it burns off really quickly, not to like, not to make a point of it, like, um, because we have faster burn processing or like our burn is happening faster, like we're only putting on, like if we hit health, we're only putting on like 120 burn, so it burns off in like two seconds. Another plus one range. I am going to need the mana bank soon, but man, that range is just kind of enticing i mean look at the range of these ballista towers now my coverage is insane so the potential here to have like a really high value it's going to add like just like three levels to my towers feels okay the nice thing about this path too is it's going to give me some use for these ones too um let's go for most armor one two three so the unfortunate thing is like these towers will also help out a little bit over here but mostly their job is to kind of deal with this section um, and I think, I think this is getting me really, really good value. Things are working out just fine for me. The maze is beginning to space people out appropriately. We've got another room for uh, some double battery value. So I do want to keep extending this path because if it runs down past this tower in some way or begins to split, like this is a value. Um, mana is becoming an issue. Definitely starting to see mana be an issue. I would love even more burn damage. I would love to take mana bolts too, but now I now I can't sustain it. Now now level one mana bolts I can sustain right now. So I'm going to take flaming bolts too. It's a 50% burn damage, which is like a 25% damage increase on my towers. Yeah, let's continue to focus damage around this kind of an area. We'll focus a little bit more over here later. Um, but right now I want to see what we can do over here. I'm going to have you focus on health. I'll give you three levels focused on most health. Expand. I was hoping for this. Yeah, okay. That's nice actually because it kind of... With the extra range, I get some value out of these towers now, which is really, really good. So our ability to take care of this area and the choke points is looking good. I'm worried about early portals. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. Early, port early portals scare me. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure this is just an early portal right now. Enemies drop plus two gold. Yeah, if I expand here, that's just a portal. So this is just always a portal, which means it's always going to be a problem. Uh, which means I need to focus way more DPS around this area than I had otherwise wanted to. Most armor, one, two, three, four. Just, yeah. This is going to be a problem for me um, that I'm just going to have to deal with for the rest of the game. I'm not happy about it. Ballista's deal plus one damage. I'm really looking for something to generate mana now. I've been greedy, for sure. Attacks against bleeding enemies. I don't have bleed right now, but eviscerate is good. I think I want to take Ballista's deal extra damage to health and to continue to expand this path. There's Uji. So we have Uji on the block. Let's make sure we have a tower focusing on most health. And just to slowly chip away at Uji and slow him down um, consistently so that he's at the back of the pack. That's all we want from that's all we want from this tower is to slow down Uji, give us time to deal with all this other stuff. Or Ugi, uh, as some people like to call him. Here we go. Uh, this is where things get scary, actually, because we do not have enough damage to deal with this. Yeah, I think we had we went we invested way too much in eco here. And the portal. What happened here? Mana. Mana happened here. That's what happened. We ran out of mana. Okay, so, you know, sometimes you're going for a ballista only run and you forget to get a source of mana and then you can't shoot. We need to prioritize getting more mana earlier. So we need to play less to the line. I actually kind of like getting a low house start um, because it, mean, it means, yeah, sure, my eco is worse, but I don't have to invest so much in, in towers around my houses. Um... 5% slow is critical. It's basically like a mandatory pick. 
It's actually a, a good spot for towers. These are all totally viable. Another, so we're, we've already got 10% slow, which is honestly kind of like an incredibly powerful early game pick. You go ahead and target most health to take two levels, take three levels actually. I don't need universities this early. I don't want weak mana generation. I'll take bleed. Eventually we could hit bleed on our ballistas. There's another, uh, let's go ahead and hit that house plus another two ballistas. Ideally you'll be aimed at most health and then you'll be aimed at most armor. One, two, three. I'll give you three levels. Now we're looking pretty okay. Ballistas deal shield damage. Mana Siphons, they're okay, but for a card, they're really cheap and effective mana generation. Um, I'll take them because they give me like a baseline mana generation, but they really don't cover my need for mana. Let's target most armor. One, two, three. Kind of at that point now where we need to think about mana. We've got a house generating. These are not very good ballistas, but they will eventually, right? If these are 200 gold, they will eventually, after 10 to 20 rounds, pay for themselves. Um, and not only that, but pay for themselves by doing damage. There's banditry. Banditry is a mandatory pick. You have to take bandit. You don't. It's like you don't have a choice. I'm worried. If this loops to the left, we've got ourselves uh, probably a worst case scenario ballista game, um, which is like incredibly rare for like the game to loop back on itself. But it has happened to me before, and I'm pretty sure it'll happen to me again. In fact, I'm like I'm like 99% sure this path is curving to the left, and I'm just doomed, and I'm getting a portal because this is literally the formation that I've seen before that absolutely 100% caused me to get an early portal. Now we take the mana bank because it's necessary. We expand. Okay, we went to the right. Okay, so we're kind of safe here. Actually, this kind of now, this is starting to look like a good ballista spot because it covers both the start and end. Um, target most health. One, two, three. There's your three levels. Um, we've got some pretty good areas for batteries of ballistas all along our home defense path, which I'm pretty happy about. But I like to continue to expand along the path with my towers for quite a while. Attacks against bleeding enemies have a crit chance. Not bad. Eventually, if we get bleed, kill him with fire. I think I'll take kill him with fire. Um, and we'll ballista here. I want you to target most health. One, two, three. Target most armor. One, two, three. Perfect. Upgrades. So we have 10% slow, which means batterying our ballistas is totally viable. And um, what batterying is, is this where you have like a group of ballista firing into a huge mass of enemy units um, to slow them down. Now, one thing we can also start to do is have some of my towers target the slowest enemies. Bleeding enemies, increase poison damage. I think we'll take poison damage. So we're ready on our, our, our stats. We just need to actually get upgrades on these towers. 250, another spawn. I'm a little bit worried about this. We're kind of, are we, we're slightly under killing things, which is not ideal. You're targeting most armor. Have another two levels. Maybe that'll help. The lack of, the lack of um, actual stat damage is, is worrying. I have slow, which is nice, but it does not perfectly fix our problems. The nice thing about slow is though, like as we thin out the herd, the slow starts to stack and it kind of causes people to stagger out and spread out a little bit, which makes our lives a little bit easier. Yeah, the problem is now we have all these stats. So this is a learning point. By taking these, we've actually, we've spoiled our, our card draw. Um, I'll take slow cooker because that works with my slow build that I've got going right now. If I can hit fire, uh, go ahead and target most health. One, two, three, three levels. Boom. Yeah, here we go. This is where things might open up a little bit. We've got banditry level one. There's people coming through. Yeah, we should be okay. It's becoming an issue, though, that we're not doing enough damage early on in the round. He says as he, like, places more towers deeper into the into the track to make the problem even worse. We should be fine to clear this. I'm worried about Uji. Ugi? Ugi? Ugi I, I, I say his name differently literally every time I talk about him. But the deeper we get into this... Um, the scarier things like Oogie become when we're not killing, like, at all fast enough. And the problem is just the lack of upgrades on our Ballista Towers. We have really, really good, like, elemental upgrades. We're just not hitting Ballista Tower upgrades. It's a big problem for me. Um, crit chance is good. Maximum burn. I don't need max burn. I need the crit chance. It lowers the damage of all of my towers. But it does give me that tasty crit chance. Go ahead and target max armor. One, two, three, four. The problem is across like a build like this, the crit chance really doesn't do that much. Um, and it basically causes me to have to invest in my towers a bit more. I think we're dead. 
I think this is just a bad run. Another bad run. Another failed run. Sometimes you get them. Sometimes you just... You, you start off a round and um, it just doesn't work for you. So I think I think going for these early stat debuff things is a mistake. I think you really want to like fish for those upgrades to your Ballista early and take Mana Bank early. I think Mana Siphon, I think the lack of Mana Bolts also is causing me issues because Mana Bolts plus crit is really, really good scaling. Um, we are actually slowing though. I think we may have gotten a few lucky crits here. I'm just generally just doing well. Plus one damage to health would be nice. I think I want to go for plus one damage to armor because that unlocks burn damage. Go ahead and target armor. One, two, three, four, five. It'll just add some levels there. Um, so we can target armor and slowly chip away at these heavy armor boys while we let everyone else run through. Um, probably a good idea to have some people targeted at slow enemies too. Things are looking okay though. We'll want more ballista. Just purely because the more ballistas we pack into an area, the more slow that we stack up on some of these units, right? Which is ideal. By slowing them down, we get more time to shoot at them. So now range and um, slow actually scales really nicely because more towers are firing at a single target. They cover more of the track. They slow enemy down so they get to shoot more. So slow and range on ballista towers is really, really, really good. It's relatively easy to deal with these little minions that spawn. It's the it's the the higher health kind of goblin leaders that are a problem. Yeah, break them up into little groups. Perfect. I think we've got this in the bag. It's a little bit slow. It's a slow build for sure. I don't need mana right now. Uh, more towers would be nice. It would be nice to get another tower like here, covering both ends. Let's have you target most armor again. Ah, uh, mana bolts, there we go. This is huge. So every single one of my towers now basically got three levels in terms of base damage. They do cost mana to shoot, but that's now 18 base damage up from 15, which is huge. That might not seem like much, but remember, every time you level up a tower, it costs money and it increases their base damage and one of their multipliers. So like base damage is pretty good. Now we are going to have to start worrying about mana, but I don't think I want to go more than like two to three mana bolts. I think it becomes too expensive mana siphon when you're going mono tower. Um, let's continue to expand this. Yeah, now, now look at this damage. This damage is starting to be like respectable damage that you can, you can like, you could, you know, fire a letter off to or whatever. I don't know that words are hard sometimes. Um, the bunching is a problem. It, it should be, it should be fine long term. Um, as I continue to expand out the maze, but the bunching, it is, it is a problem right now. The amount of bunching that I'm having happen. And, you know, the best way to deal with bunching is to make it worse by adding more towers. <laughs> do, 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 do. Well, like, you know, things are okay. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. We got it, we got it. The bunching, not a problem, in hindsight. Theoretically, it represents a problem, but it's not a problem right now. Attacks have a chance to bleed. I think I want to get broadhead bolts. Again, this scales really nicely. It improves every single one of my ballista towers, which I already have a lot of. Um... Let's continue to expand out. This is a really good choke point area. In fact, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, I think this is just a really, really good solid choke point. Most armor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get a few levels in. We do have the crit tower promotion thing. Something to consider when we're when we're upgrading towers. Make sure we're playing around our crits. Most armor. Boom, 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 boom. So we just want towers that like can efficiently damage armor to be doing that. Is really our goal here. And I think our current like upgrade level. You know, if we think about it, I think you take like the square root of whatever the truncated value is or like the factorial root or whatever. What's the is a fact is a factorial. It's like square or root or factorial root or whatever this thing is. I don't know which one grows fast. I don't remember. Plus two damage to armor. That'll help. Enchanted bolts would be good to unlock the ability to poison, though. Yeah, I want this poison enemy. Poisoning enemies also slows them by 5% of the poison game. I'm going to take heavy shafts. Kind of guy that I am, just looking for heavy shafts. There's Oogie. Oogie Oogie. Target most health. Let's add a little bit of extra damage. What we want to do is we want to we want to make sure we're targeting Oogie to slow him down. So he's last at the train. So that's all we're looking for. The rest of the stuff we can deal with, I think. Um, we could definitely deal with it. Copium. That's just a matter of um can we get enough damage firing off into the front of this crowd, basically. And I think we can. Oogie has been slowed significantly now to where he's at the back of the pack, so we'll have every tower firing at him, and all his minions are running forward. We're fine. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. I definitely feel like we have this. This this is honestly easy. To, oh, yeah, mana bank, right. 
Uh, yeah, mana is be an issue. Let's let's start off with mana siphons because they're efficient. I completely forgot. I, like this is again the downfall of every single one of my runs, almost like every single time without fail, is um, is forgetting to get mana. <laughs> it's like such an easy thing to forget, uh, but you can see the mana demand and usage is is relatively stable right now. But that's only with this many towers. Let's go ahead and plus one range on blue towers is good. Open treasure chest. Poisoning enemy also slows them. Okay, open treasure chest. Ballistas deal plus two damage to health. Broadhead bolts. Okay, our ballistas are scaling. Oh wow, there's a really good platform for a ballista battery over here, actually. So we'll want to get around to that one. Um, let's continue to expand here. Yeah, there we go. So now this is bunching, which I don't like. And we're going to want the ballista that focuses on shields. And we're going to want him pretty heavily leveled. So that he can focus on shields and do serious damage to shields. I've also got a lack of statistical effects, which is going to cause me issues. But the advantage is I have slow here. Um, and that'll make my life a little bit easier when it comes to dealing with these shield guys. Really need that poison. Also, the fact that I only have banditry one is really hurting my gold income. The, the going for the... We're learning, we're learning the sort of meta of going for a... Um, we're learning the meta of going for a, 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 a mono tower. A, a, the ballista only build right and the the big downside that we've perceived here is unlocking these things here poison your your draw card well pretty heavily now we should be okay on this i think while we don't have any status effects we have a lot of slow and i think slow basically solves all of your problems early game it's like a crutch that like yeah sure your dps is terrible but it doesn't matter because you can just slow your way out of the out of the problem. Um, let's continue to build this anti-shield battery area. So there will probably be like a whole gang of towers up here. Probably get all five on the plus threes. Um, who will be taking care of all the shields that are going to be coming through here. Bleeding attacks. Attacks have... I think we'll take Trail of Blood. I think we'll take a Visceral. No, I think we'll take Trail of Blood. Maybe we'll get Bleed. Maybe it'll happen. Um, and the nice thing about these towers is if they don't have a high shield enemy to target, they'll just kind of do passive damage. Like, look at that. Perfect. Like, look at that. Look at that shield get shredded. Um, that's exactly the kind of thing we want to see. Just can we deal with that shielding? Man, the lack of status effects, though. It's tough out here. I definitely feel like I need to concentrate more firepower around the actual circles and get, like, my batteries going. Uh, let's target near death. And you're going to be just, like, slightly leveled. You're also going to target near death. And then gently leveled up to level 8, I think, is, is a reasonable thing to do. We just kind of... Everyone has to walk through these paths, so I think filling out this area might be a good move here. Just to make sure we have enough damage to deal with things. Because we don't have AoE, right? So bunching isn't necessarily like super important to us. We just need raw DPS. The nice thing is actually the slow is giving our towers lots of opportunity to level up passively from fighting here. Um, and eventually it'll become more cost effective for me to upgrade towers than it is to actually build more. But right now, the more towers I have shooting, the more enemies I can kind of spread out across my base. So I think having a mixture of like targeting, like targeting priorities allows you to like try to minimize the amount of wasted firepower, right? Because I have some people targeting the least amount of health units. I have some people targeting progress. I have some people targeting highest health and highest shields. Mana bolts too is huge. Plus three damage to armor is huge. But I think the biggest thing here is 25% burn damage. That's a game changer right there. Um, like a, like a, a monumental game changer. Um, let's get this tower, I guess to target fastest and we'll do like a little bit of clicking to upgrade him to like level six ish give him that six percent crit chance so he's going to be pro prioritizing you know slowing people down bringing them down a notch making sure that these low health guys aren't getting through for free i think this pair of anti-shield towers have done work now for me they've made my life significantly easier because they kind of slow down these already slow shield guys right which means they arrive to the, the base slower. Man, these guys over here are real slow. But right, they arrive slower, which gives me more time to deal with them. I can, you know, the rest of my, my line of towers can, can deal with the rest of this nonsense a little bit more easily as a result. And like, sure, the burn damage isn't super important. But I mean, I think the burn damage is actually being significant here in terms of our DPS. You know, it's like a 25% DPS increase, which is not ignorable. Okay, okay. We're a little bit slow. Our DPS is low, but I think we're making good progress. It's satisfying. I actually, I would love to know how the experience mechanics for the towers actually works. Like, is, is it every shot? Is it the amount of damage they do? We're not quite at the level where we need to think about universities. Trail of Blood 2 would be nice. 
I don't have poison. Man, I think I, th I think I take mana bolt too. Because that just gives me really good scaling across all the towers that I already have. And uh, we just continue. We just continue to, to rock the party rock tonight. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue to fill out all my plus three slots that are on my main path. I'm going to have you target the slowest enemy you can find. Let's give you a few gentle levels. Um, but the nice thing is now what's happening is enemies are coming in in trickles and they're not making it past this corner. Now our mana consumption is huge. So let's get some mana siphons on the ground. Any mana crystals around? There we go. There's another mana crystal. So the mana siphons are not amazing, right? If you consider mana bank, uh, this is a uh, 500 gold for four mana per second, whereas the mana siphon is 100 gold for one mana per second. So it's like a more efficient, but it's, again, you're giving up a card slot here for this relatively weak mana amount. Good work. See, oh, look at all this slowing. It's it's making dealing with these, like let the, let the, let the weak guys run through. That's the trick, I feel. I feel like we want to target most shield and slowest like the slowest enemy with the most shield just get them slow down but yeah this is beautiful this is exactly what you want to see here plus one damage to shields opens up poison possibilities on our ballistas oh god man the, the branching of the path over here is kind of bad actually like there's way too much stuff coming through here now um it does mean that like it breaks up like the flow of enemies coming um, but it's really 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 in ideal it does give me like a really good excuse to like get my full battery here going um, this is still going to be like the the anti shield, the anti shield battery, I think, because it just feels like that. That feels like it makes sense to me. Is that you let everything else, you let all the small fry run through to the um, to the big problem up here, and then you guys just focus on thinning out all the the shielded enemies as they come through. I'll probably set up another battery here focused on armor, and then maybe a battery here focused on health. You know, we'll see exactly how we we figure out how we want to do these things long term. This battery fire is, it's not like an insane amount of damage, but I feel like it's working out pretty well. They got a 10% crit chance. They got 10% slow, 25% burn. We're up to round 20. I don't know when the next Uji comes. I'm going to be real with you. Plus two damage to shields, heavy shaft, plus three damage to armor. That's fine. Plus three damage to armor is pretty good. I need to keep spacing out these troops so they don't all come at the same time. The overlap over there is like a little bit scary. What's our mana like? Our mana seems relatively okay. I'm going to add like two mana banks. Keep this, uh, and honestly, spacing out the whole enemy troop means that there's less concentration of fire required. Now, they are getting pretty deep now, which is a problem. Vamp, like, the lack of bleed is going to make vampires basically unkillable. Um, that's something we're going to have to deal with, like, big time. Like, we might have to start to rely on battery fire to, to deal with vampires. I think it's tempting here to set up an anti-armor battery. It doesn't need quite as much investment to be good here. But like in conjunction with this, ah, oh, there's the bleed damage. So the bleed damage is huge. I would love to pick up universities, but I need that bleed damage. I don't have a choice. The bleed damage has to happen. These towers over here are doing a great job thinning the herd. And I think that's that's actually like the key. I might set up another battery and a battery here and just like have a bunch of like different targeted units um, focusing on shields, on armor, all that sort of jazz. Uh, maybe I'll have this battery focused on like three different things. So they're like spreading their shots out to try and thin out the herd a little as well. Okay, people are making it fairly deep, but that's partially because I don't have poison damage to deal with these shields. That would be a big deal. I also need to consider going through and like upgrading a bunch of these towers. They're a little bit old and a little bit unupgraded. And they're still doing the job because they're scaling off of the upgrades we're picking up for our ballistas. So it's not too bad. Here we go. This is this is the big money right here. They just walk into a, a volley of fire that is hard to sustain. And ideally, um, the positioning of these towers is actually incredible because it basically means they're shooting from the moment the round starts to the moment the round ends. These towers are doing DPS, which is um, not something that a lot of my towers can say. And maximizing the shooting time of your towers is actually a big deal. Um, banditry 2, this is huge. So like as much as I want broadhead bolts and like universities, extra gold, um, massive. Um, and I think, I think we just start pushing for a portal over here. Now the Uji, the Ugi spawn could be bad here if he spawns on any of these two paths, but they're pretty, they're pretty like still you know, before majority of my damage. Um, let's build three more towers. You're going to focus on the fastest. You're going to focus on the lowest health or rather you're going to focus on near death and then you're going to focus on the slowest. So we have three different targeting methodologies here and the hope is that by targeting three different things, they're going to be spreading their damage out in a way that isn't like totally illogical. I'll just like level them up to be average towers. 
that are good against anything because they're not really targeting a specific damage type more they're just targeting like different statistical abilities of units and the hope is that by spacing these guys out a little bit that they'll kind of slow down and not always target the same enemy and you can see it's kind of working they're targeting all different things like one of them is targeting near death etc a ah, little bit more mana just do two more mana banks uh, banditry three feels really important man broadheld and enchanted bolt still seems good but banditry tree i think we got we got it super late um so we've already lost a lot of value on banditry if i build this it's almost certainly a portal so i need to be careful about how i expand this is almost certainly a portal okay it did turn to the left that's actually really good news we need to like space out uji a little bit here so the, the speed of the enemies and the length of the path is kind of naturally spacing them out for me, which is kind of ideal. I think now I want to start, now that I've got like my batteries up over here, maybe one more battery there, maybe some more houses, but I need to start thinking about, need to planning for universities and also just concentrating fire along this path. So anything running along here will get completely shredded. Um, the bleed against vampires is helping a huge amount. Because not only do vampires um, regenerate health really, really quickly, 100 health per second, um, which is prevented by the bleed. So just putting a bleed on someone is worth 100 DPS. Um, they also spawn a bat when they die. So you got to like, the longer they push, the further they go. And then they spawn the bat and the bat runs really fast. So like slowing down vampires and killing them is a really big deal. There is 25% more burn damage. Now that's big. I think we take the flaming bolts and we're starting now to place uh, the occasional random tower. Now, I, I think tower, these ballista towers, honestly, they work better in batteries. Um, this is going to be the most health battery. Uh, what were these guys leveled up to? Like 11? 9? Level 9? So I guess I'll do... Yeah, about, about 7 levels on these. That seems okay to me. Boom, there we go. Um, continue to expand this. It's probably a mistake to continue to expand this path. Robo Ugi, all the way over here. Zombie Ugi, um, probably want a tower to target most shield to try and slow him down a little bit uh, so that he's at the back of the pack. That's all we want from this tower is to slow down Ugi. And it'll slowly do a little bit of extra passive damage as well. But getting Ugi to make sure that we can fight Ugi alone, we can get 100% of our tower DPS onto him, pretty important. So having tactical tower placement there helps. But like, look, we've got a really nice choke point here. Now we've got a little bit of bunching, which is not ideal. Ideally, you want to avoid getting bunching happening. But I guess that's not the worst thing in the world if there's like a little bit of bunching. These towers are not good against shield damage, but they will get some experience towards shield damage. And it's not the end of the world if a tower like levels up on a category that it's not amazing at, because it's still worth plus one base damage right across the whole board. But it definitely feels like specialization of your towers is, is, is quite powerful and important. Like here's the thing, just shooting alone actually like generates you revenue in terms of upgrades. So that's something you have to really, really, I think when you get to optimization levels, that's something you have to really consider. So he released his little pack of ghosts. Uji is dead. Give me those treasure. Poisoned enemies. I'm going to take the university because it's relevant now. Um, ballistas deal shield damage. All towers gain 5% crit chance. 5% crit chance, big deal. Attacks have a 5% chance to crit against enemies that are bleeding. We do have bleed. And Ballista's deal, 25% more bleed damage. Okay, I'll take that. That's like not an amazing outcome of this situation. But we do now have access to potential universities. Early universities are absolutely unfathomably based. The return on investment, the earlier the university is, the better. Um, but we also need to be careful about balancing our investment in universities, which is generally investing quite heavily in like this choke point here. So let's start getting some general progress targeting so that they're firing at the front of the pack. Then we'll get another tower and you target near death. And then, ooh, mana is a problem. Let's get more mana banks. Boom, 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 boom. Mana banks are helping. So every time I click this, this expand now uh, ability, each of these has a 2% chance to get me a boost across all of my categories. 10% crit chance on ballistas is really good. Vile consumption, though, quite good. Even though I don't have poison yet. 10% crit, that's like a huge DPS increase, right? If you think about it, right? If your tower has a 0% chance to crit, and then you give it a 10% chance to do double damage, that's like 90% of the time it's doing one damage. And 10% of the time it's doing two damage. So it's like a 10% damage increase, really. 
is what this is. This is just a 10% flat damage increase. Whereas this is like potentially a bigger damage increase down the line. So I'm going to take the 10% because critting, critting seems like fun. I don't know, I like critting. Let's continue to build out. I want to like, I want to look for these like really efficient plus two spots. Because it's like two base damage and a whole range. I don't know, it just feels like it, it makes a difference. Target most health. You will be leveled up to, I guess 10 is like a reasonable level to put these up to now. I need to like do the, I need to actually do the math on that. Like if we take it right now that a tower worth 610. So it's like one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus six. 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. It's actually efficient to go all the way up to like level 11 for us right now in terms of like tower gold cost. And I, that's just like a ballpark that I use is... Um, so I think what I do now is I go through and make sure every tower is about level 11. Because don't forget, we're, we're critting, we're, we're doing all sorts of stuff. We've already got plus one health damage from one of our universities. Big, by the way. That just helps out so much. Remember, everything scales off your base damage and your health multipliers. So if you can get that up high enough, it starts to really make a difference. Uh, vial consumption or bleed them dry? Let's do bleed them dry because we actually have bleed damage on our towers. Maybe that'll make a difference. Uh, let's go through and, 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 you know, pretty much everything I want to say from like here to here-ish, I want to get to like level 11-ish. We check this guy out. What do you do? You target most health? All right, let's get you to level 11. Your most health as well, level 11, level 11. What are you targeting? You guys are all level 11, so it's fine. What are you targeting? You are most armor. Um, you're level 10, level 10, most shield targeting. You guys are fine. Now for these towers that are kind of like randomly targeted, I'm just going to like click whichever, like if they have like built up a bit of um, like levels from attacking certain things. I'll give them those levels because that's just like, I'm just helping them out. You know what I'm saying? They've already done the work. I'm just, I'm just tapping them over the finish line a little bit here. Good job. A lot of these towers are doing great, actually. Um, so this, this should be now in theory, like a very efficient amount of upgrading that I've just done here. Like theoretically... The, the, the potential of my, my, my zone just got like really, really quite a bit bigger. And we should start to see dividends. Uh, uh, there's probably like break points where you want your towers to do a minimum amount of damage, to, like one shot certain enemies at this stage of the game. I don't, I don't, I haven't gotten that like deep into it yet. So I don't really understand like when and where I might do that. But I do know the lack of poison is hurt, going to hurt me as we go into the next phase. Right now, it's not a big deal. Um, but I will want to get poison on my towers before, before honestly, round like 35. It's like, if I can get it before then, I think we're fine. So there's a little bit of bunching over here, which is not ideal, but our damage is like crazy. And we're not, we probably won't have to deal with much bleeding because of our, yeah, see the bunching from the slow? Not ideal, but it does mean they're theoretically like, and I'm not seeing a lot of healing happening, which seems fine. Um, and the other thing is we want to spread out our attacks to maximize the number of enemies being slowed and also the amount of time that people are actually bleeding and burning and stuff like that because we have status effects right and the longer they are slowed and taking damage from those status effects the more efficient that they were the mana bolts three is a scary proposition but it is like think of this it's like three levels on every tower plus it also scales off crit plus it scales off of our burn and bleed Whew, mana bolts three boom now it's eight mana a shot so that's a big increase which means mana banks our um, mandatory banks at this point. Um, let's do another level here. Okay, perfect. We got a loop back. That's actually a big loop back. That's going to make our lives slightly easier in some respect. Opens up new players for uh, new places for tower choke points. How's our mana? Looking okay right now. Ready to drop more mana banks though. But I'm expecting this whole back line to just be mana banks at some point. Yeah, okay. Mana consumption is too high now. Mana bank time. Still too high. Yeah, plus, so I, I really don't know if we can go much higher on the mana bolt thing. Um, we seem to be sustaining just barely, but you got to remember, as you level up your towers, they start to consume more and more mana. Like if I were to just throw down this basic ballista, right, it uses six mana per shot compared to like some of these like level 12 towers, it uses nine. So now leveling up towers is like pretty mana efficient. It's something we have to consider. They will use more mana, but they will do it efficiently. Just just things to think about. Things to, 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 to rustle around in the old noggin there in terms of efficiency. 
have not seen another place for universities to go, which is slightly unfortunate. Perfect world, I would have a university every time I clicked. Um, but we have actually nailed like really good luck here. Plus one health damage and plus one shield damage. That's very, very lucky. To get that on three universities that are not like upgraded, really. Plus three damage to health on our ballistas. Use mana to engulf enemies. Plus three ballista damage to health is quite a powerful upgrade. Let's get a ballista right there. Um, I guess you'll join the most armor and uh, just fire off on anyone who has high armor. It's a great spot for a tower right there. We're going to get a portal here, which is uh, going to be a bit of a double-edged sword. Not sure how I'm feeling about the current layout and like what's our progress looking like. We've got huge gold in the bank. Really hoping for more university so I can invest into them. We already got plus two health damage. That's nice. This is why this is why like early investment in those universities, man, it pays off. Okay, so what is our big problem here? It looks like part of our problem is just simply that all of our DPS is concentrated around a very, very small section of the map. So maybe expanding a couple of small battery areas like here, maybe here, all targeting the same thing of some kind. Crit steal 10% of the targets bleed as extra bleed damage. I don't know if that's like good or not, but I'm going to take it because I'm hoping that that pays off. Let's do a triple tower here. And this set of towers will target slowest enemy in range, I think, is what they're going to do. And they're just going to be agnostic level 11 towers, kind of doing basic spread amount of damages. Boom. Level 11 kind of, yeah, level 11 is still a good number. Well, boom. So that's one battery here. And then I think I'll do another battery here targeting most health, I guess. And then I'll do, I don't know if this is a good thing to do, but maybe this gets us like a little bit of damage in some respects here that like makes a difference because like we're popping rams and stuff like that. I don't know if spacing out these towers is making a difference, but it seems to have actually contributed to even bigger bunching at the front of the line, which is just like not good. <laughs> I've, made, I've, I've made my problems worse. <laughs> Increase max bleed, burn and poison. Bleeding enemies take extra health damage. Man, that's good, but I don't think it matters. Max bleed, burn, and poison. We don't have poison. And the problem is I don't actually want enemies to bleed faster because there's only a, there's a limit to how fast I can apply this damage. Um, so I'm going to take Trail of Blood. And now I'm going to start building the, the ultimate, like, uber battery here. You're going to target near death. And we'll balance out your humors to be relatively balanced. You will target progress and we'll, again, balance out your humors. A level 11 seems okay for me right now. Uh, a little bit of mana probably doesn't hurt here. Have I seriously not hit another university? Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Hello. Boom, boom. Unfortunately, won't get the value from this, but this will be a four university guy. So I can do one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, and now I'm going to do a focus on a focus on anti-shield, I think is our focus here. Looking okay. I think these batteries are helping. I can't tell. I don't know why they're targeting the slowest at some like weird angle. My mana consumption is looking relatively stable. I'll add like two mana banks. That should give us just a little bit of extra buffer. Um, and then we can focus on universities. These should be rather, these are just rockets. I can't do mana bolt four. It's too much. Uh, plus one damage to armor across my entire thing. Critical hits deal an additional 10% of the target's current bleed is extra bleed damage. I don't know if this is good, but I'm going to take it. Um, no, plus one range, actually. It's huge. If I really think about it, it like my towers shoot earlier. They do more damage. Their potential is higher. You get in target most armor. Get you to level 12. That's fine. His damage when hitting armor is quite, quite solid, actually. Um, his damage when hitting shield is very bad. Unfortunate reality. But this tower might actually be ass. <laughs> this tower might actually have been a waste of my money. <laughs> but I've, I'm invested in it now. Okay, looking good, looking good. God, do I just need more towers firing into the, to the void? My mana? Oh, mana dipping. All right, mana bank. One, two, three, four mana banks. I think that's helping. <sighs> Man, I want that mana bolt. But it is spooky to pick up that much mana bolt. Um, max bleed? We are starting to scale off of universities. I don't know if I can afford to make them suffer. 
Mana Bolts 4 is a meme, and I'm willing to live for the meme. That increased my mana per shot by four. I have actually just killed myself. Uh, oops, I, I, I accidentally ruined my own game. Uh, oops, I need to build more uh, mana banks. Oops, I don't think it's going to matter. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, they're not even in, they're not even into the main section of my my army yet. And we're already having mana issues. But I mean, the damage, the damage is disgusting on these towers. That is the big thing. Oh, it scales like mana bolts is actually so good. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, there goes the mana. OK, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Ooh, we're using over 200 mana per second. Is a, is a thing across our entire like lineup, um, but as long as we can get that under control, mm, and looking like we're just barely. So here's the thing: either either your your mana is full, or it's empty. That, that that's how that works. There's no like, oh, you're stabilized at fifty percent mana. No, no, your mana is full or it's empty in this game. There is no, oh, we're stable. It just doesn't work that way. We we burn too much mana too quickly for us to think like that. All universities get a 3% bonus to research. Does not pay off quickly, but has the potential to carry us through to the end of the game. I will take scholarships. Boom. Uh, now all of these universities uh, are just that much more valuable for me. Let's do an expansion. There's Robo Uji, and he spawned at a very inopportune location. However, he will come at the very back of the pack. That is the one advantage of where he spawned, because I have a tower focusing on him already. Um, burning him down. Now, one thing I don't understand, like, is the, is the critting meaning that we're actually, like, doing instant damage? Or does it just mean that it's, like, reapplying the poison and bleed? Because I'm really not sure how that works. Um, I really don't understand how I don't have shield damage <laughs> yet. Like, how do, I, how do I not have shield damage? This is paying off really well, though. We've already got so many levels out of this. Again, remember, this is scaling across every single tower. Um, we're going to need more... We're going to need just basically more battery. More DACA over here. Yeah, we're getting to that point now. It's level 35. Robo Oogie is here. Oh, man, the lack of poison damage for those cultists is going to kill me. I need to roll poison this round. I need to roll poison in the next three rounds or I die. I'm pretty sure. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So it doesn't look like it's actually like reapplying the poison when it happens, when it's critting. It just seems to be like ever increasing it to an absurd level, which I'm honestly okay with. I like, guess, wait, are they actually like, when they crit, are they, oh, are they instantly applying the bleed damage when they crit? That might actually be how that works. And it kind of looks like it is, which makes that super amazing. 10% crit chance now is actually like massive for me. 2% bonus to all research is huge. What is my current average crit? Like 27%, 10% crit? It's a big deal. This is like a 10% damage increase. That's why it's so hard. But the scholarships, I think the 2% research, it scales really well. It leads us on into the late game. I just really hope I don't get any bad chests. 5% crit chance. Okay. Haunted house. Uh, crit steal 10% of the card's current bleach damage as extra bleed damage. I'm hoping that that pays off. I went, I went like pretty crit heavy here. So I'd say about 800 gold is where it starts getting worth it to be like level... 13 to 15 on your towers um, before you start adding more. Where is a good candidate for another battery or to expand a battery? I mean, honestly, this whole field here just feels like a killing field. So maybe if I just target for progress. Nah, I'll, I'll target most shield. I, th I, th I think targeting most shield and leveling them up to like 15 is like the thing to do here. By targeting a specific type of damage, I um, I thin the herd of that damage. And also the tower will actually be efficiently making use of its levels. If it hits something else, it's not the end of the world. Like it scales pretty well, but it's not necessary. So we just added four more towers. I can probably fit another really nice tower here. Yeah, it is a plus three uh, and you will target most health. So we're on to the spooky cultist ghosty stuff now. So if we make it past level 38, I think we're, we're, that's a good benchmark. Uh, less than that is not good. So uh, the big problem we have here is our boy, the cultisty boys that are going to be tough for us to deal with. However, battery fire seems to be working. We're kind of thinning the herd. We're slowing down the high shield enemies, letting everyone else run through the gauntlet, which is kind of what I was hoping for here is that by applying a bunch of slow to the high shield cultisty guys, 
maybe we'll make it through okay. Mm. Oh, now there's a big, big old, big old traffic congestion coming. Yeah, see, the lack of poison damage is just crippling. Like, because they're regenerating, what? 300 mana per sec, or 300 shields per second? This is too much. It's not even per second, that it's at like a higher rate. I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. If you just, you, if you just never roll the poison, you never get it. You just lose. That's the problem. I can't kill any of these guys. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. They just get to make it through. That really sucks. I felt like we had like a sick as hell run. And uh, we lose it on RNG. But man, I will. One day. This is my Everest. I will make a Ballista only run. I swear to God. So if we look at our revenue though. We went for monster we actually you know we got like nearly 10k gold from these houses so i feel like that's actually a really good return on investment if you if you feel like you can last it like a thousand gold per house pretty good these houses actually pay off they really do better look next time i guess